Okay, so on Thursday, um, I had you read this after the quiz. Some may not have gotten through all of it, but then we went through this money analogy. I thought of another analogy. So the money analogy had to do with like, you could take your money and store it in different forms, right? Yeah. Currency as a prepaid credit card, currency as cash money in your hand, currency as maybe a, a baseball card collection. I found a whole like 1986 complete set of baseball cards in this box when I collected when I was in high school. I'm like, huh, I don't know what that's worth. Um, so all of those things are not different currencies, right? A prepaid credit card, um, money in your checking account, money in your hand. Are those different forms of currency or it does it not matter? It's just like how it's being held out to. Yeah, it's just money. It's just how it's being preserved as long as it's not like in the stock market that can collapse and then that money I used to have there isn't there anymore. So, um, So we went through that and then, oh, the other analogy that I thought of today is like, think about cars. Hello, Mr. Banfield. Hello, everyone. Let me pause this because, oh, I, there's lots of learning going on. So the other analogy that I thought of was this. Think about what kind of car do you drive? What, type, what kind of car does your mom drive? On a pilot. What do you drive? Uh, Jeep. A Jeep. What do you drive, Jacob? Uh, Ford Escape. Ford. Okay. okay, so three different makes and models of cars, right? But when we want to talk about modes of transportation, are they really any different? A car, a truck, an SUV, you get in, you push the start button or turn the key and drive from point A to point B, right? Okay, so how you got there doesn't matter what was carrying you, right? Okay, so so that's what I want you to think of in terms of energy. Last week we went through all that kinetic energy, gravitational energy, elastic potential energy. And in reality, there's no such thing as a different vehicle for energy. This might be the Honda Pilot. This might be the Ford escape or whatever it was, the Jeep, or Grand Cherokee, whatever. They're just ways that energy is being observed. So there's no such thing as different forms of energy, but we'll just describe how the energy is being held on to. So it's cash money in your hand, it's a prepaid credit card, it's a savings account, it's a whatever. Uh, so um, it's just, that's what we want to think of as energy. I will slip and call it forms because I am not going to stand here and go, what is the mode of energy storage for that car that's driving at 50 miles an hour? That's a pain in the butt. We'll, we'll slip back to call it kind or form, whatever. It doesn't matter. So what I want to um, kind of transition us into is like, what are we going to do with this knowledge? <laughs> so what's the relationship today between Buffy and Biff? Apparently not a good one. <laughs> so Buffy apparently is irritated with Biff because he either said something wrong, looked at another girl, didn't call her back. I don't know what what the problem is, but she's going to toss a water balloon and, and bomb him in the dome. So, so she's got it up here in the air. She's up here, so clearly there's a height, that's the H and the little blue line across her neck to her hand is like, that's the height the water balloon is before she throws it. So she throws it and follows that path. She gives it more energy, right, to get it higher up in the air and get it moving. We had a different W word that I haven't brought up yet. What did she do to transfer energy to that balloon? Work. Work. So with her work, she had to exert a force to get the thing moving. 
a distance from here to wherever she lets go of it. And so that transfers energy to it. So that explains where or how it gets to this higher plane. What kind of energy does it have at the highest point, Miller? Um, yep. And because it's moving, it'll have kinetic also, right? But So it gained both of those things through the work that she did from here to let go. Um, and so a question eventually with more information would be, how fast was the balloon going when it hit him in the head? And right now you're probably going, how would we know? You don't have enough information yet, but what we need to do, so this little cartoon visual is a way of like organizing, what do we start with? Balloon flies through the air. That's not really all that important, but where do we end? And we end with the balloon just at impact, has some speed, so Jacob, number middle Jacob, what kind of speed is it, or what, because it has speed, what kind of energy does it have? Uh, kinetic. And it's still not at the ground level. Right, Noah? So if it's still up in the air, what kind of energy does it have? Gravitational. And then there's a little bit of weirdness. So it's easy to see that before she throws it, she's holding it up here going, you, you're going to eat this thing. So it's got just that. We don't care what happened in the middle, so ignore that for just a minute. But when it's just about to hit him, there's your kinetic. It's moving. There's your gravitational. This is a weird thing. What do you think the TH stands for again? Thermal, she says. Yeah. So where would that come from? So it's at impact right now. The balloon's breaking and tearing. It's like sliding across his head. Where, would the, where does thermal energy usually come from? It's heat, but where, what generates the heat? Friction. You can sit there. Friction, yeah. So when the balloon distorts and tears, it's probably going to like create a little bit of heat in that tearing process. Um, maybe there's a little bit of like scrape across the head when it's hitting them in this head. So there's some thermal energy. So what's all this garbage in the middle? That's, it explains it down here. But I underlined the word system. The system is the things that are exchanging energy back and forth with each other. So if you notice, Biff is definitely the recipient of some energy. The balloon, that's where you're saying it's like tearing or something and it's probably kind of create a little heat during that process. And the Earth. Why would the Earth need to be in there? Gravity. It's gravitational energy. Without the Earth, there is no gravitational energy. And that is definitely a part of our equation. But it says that Buffy is outside of the circle of friendship. Okay? Maybe that's why she's angry. I don't know why she's angry. There's the work you guys told me about. Throwing it from this position to let go, distance, force through that distance. That's where the extra height and extra gravitational energy comes from, from the point it leaves her hand until its peak. So if she's not in the system, you also mentioned work being the transfer of energy into those things in the system. So flow refer refers to the input of energy into the balloon and the earth and the if system. And when I said, how fast is the balloon going to be going when it hits Biff in the head? Yes, we do need more information. But this is how we go from visualizing the situation to an equation that if we had numbers and things, we could plug in and solve for V. So you'll see um, before the throw, gravitational energy was there. Work was input by her equals the total amount is still the same over here. Um, and that would be kinetic because it was moving, gravitational because it's heads above the ground level, and there's your thermal energy for the tearing of the balloon and stuff. This is one of the most important, an example of one of the most important laws in all of science, not just the most <coughs> important class in science. 
What is it to love? I'll give you a hint. The equal sign in there is the is the big concept, the big thing. Wasn't really, I guess, on that sheet, but it was in your notes. The conservation. Yeah. So the energy, her input plus the gravitational, just because it was up there in the air, is still equal to the quantities that we're going to say it exist later on. And again, the nice thing about the law of conservation of energy is because everything stays constant, the amount of energy doesn't go up or down, it just kind of like morphs. Um, we can take this scenario, say it's equal to these things, generate what looks like a big, long, kind of like how am I supposed to come up with this on my own equation? But if you can visualize it and name it, all you can do is throw an equal in there and say this is equal to this. And then go from there. So I'm going to show you some examples, that sheet that I handed you already. I'll do one, you do one. We'll compare answers to the one that you did. And then there's a couple more left in there. It's three pages, but um, we'll skip the middle page and do the third page. There's only two examples on that third page. And truth be told, um, I copied it wrong for first hour and they didn't get the middle page. So we'll do those. We'll look at them again tomorrow. What did I say real quick? Yeah. Sorry, guys. Okay, so as you saw in that last Buffy bit, for example, there is a fair amount of like things going on, moving parts and pieces and the equations and all that. So it's important, it's important that we we look at what I've got listed up there is like here's what you should always kind of like get used to thinking about and going through step by step wise. Um, it's easy once you've done enough of these back in the day when we were first learning about free body diagrams and stuff It was easy back then to just go. Oh, I just know I need to write a free body diagram and not read directions at the top And sometimes that causes trouble um, So our system the things in the circle for future reference This is going to be referred to as an lol diagram Okay. What's that? Yeah. Yeah, you probably did that there too. So, so also, if you remember just a little while back, um, said the total quantity of energy that we identify at the beginning. And the total quantity at the end, which is going to be right here, we don't care if the car falls off the track and crashes to you know the ground, or if it makes it around. All we care about is here's the starting point, here's the ending point. We're thinking snapshot photo in time, snapshot photo in time. It makes no difference what happens anywhere else. Okay, don't care about anything else. So if we call this um, the beginning. And this the end. Oops, sorry, I'm on the wrong one. Anyways, beginning and end. What we need to do is identify the system. So in this case, I see a spring. I see up in the air, and I see these little lines. You got to look for these little clues and stuff in the cartoon. So yeah, yeah. If it wasn't moving, it'd obviously fall right off of the track. So. So in the end, we've got kinetic energy and we've got gravitational energy, right? <clears throat> Here, what kind of energy do we have before? This is before the launch happens. So which kind of potential? Because gravity is a potential. Chemicals. So it's elastic. Beautiful. Okay. So in our system, it's really nice when we can get everything in the system. So we don't have to worry about like drawing arrows that show energy coming in from like Buffy in that case before. So I'm gonna say it's the car, the spring, Earth, because it does have gravitational energy at the top of the little circle, so 
the Earth is a piece of this uh, system. And because it says there's no friction somewhere, there it is, no friction, um, we don't really even need to say track. Now, track's fairly important in this situation, but the only reason we would need to put track in there is if it somehow like absorbed some of the energy or gave up some energy to the car. Like if we have, did you say if we have friction? Yeah, yeah the next test, the next yeah. one. That's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. So um, EG, EK, E, elastic, and I'm gonna throw in there, I'm gonna sneak in there a new one, T, M, E. T, M, E, and then E, G, E, elastic, E, K. I'll just switch the orders up, sorry about that. But order doesn't really matter all that much. At the beginning, it's all elastic, right? Well, how much do I put? I don't know, so I'm just gonna put it there. By just sketching up the picture, I can see that I gotta have two different bar, um, bars. Over here, one for EK, one for EG. I can't fill, I'm going to think of these as like Lego blocks if I divide it up like this. So that's like four Lego blocks stacked on top of each other, or four boxes or something like that. Sorry, five. One, two, three, four, five. So this is five units tall. Over here, I can't have more than that. So my total all together is five units tall. And when, um, Emily said this, you gotta have the same conservation of energy. That's something that I haven't emphasized a lot. So I don't expect everybody to be like, how did she know that? How am I supposed to, I don't remember knowing that. This is kind of a new thing. So the total, isn't five more blocks of energy, it's just, this is my whole savings account right here. And it's all in this energy elastic account. That's how I'm holding it at the moment. Okay, car launches, don't care what happens, except for right here, this is our end. And we got EG and we got EK. I would put a zero right above the elastic, like name at the bottom. Just to say, check, 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 I've checked them all off. How much should I put here? And how much should I put in kinetic? Two and a half and two and a half. Let's be fair, okay? The twins, they should both get the same of everything, right? Okay, but they have different kinds, not really kinds, but that's not fair. They should get the exact same like sweatshirt that has the exact same Mickey Mouse print on it or whatever. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. We have no way of knowing it's a 50-50 split unless we have more information. I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna go three bars for gravitational and two for kinetic. And if I add those up, I get my total of five. Did you say? Uh, could be three, could be. Faster. Could be. We have no way to know like which one's holding more of the energy. Could be four and one. Could be one and four. Could be one point five and three point five. It doesn't matter as long as it adds up to the other side. So remember that pretty kind of like uh, ugly looking equation from that other thing that looked like this. <laughs> What? That's what we're going to put in this box. Somewhere it says, write an equation that describes it as four in the directions. So what happened at the beginning has to be equal to what's happening later on in terms of amounts of energy. There's no work this time because the spring was in the system um, and there's nobody else that had to like add more energy. We don't know how the spring got loaded. It's just loaded. It would have somebody probably had to do that to yeah. work with Buffy, but we won't worry about that. That's the beauty of having everything in the system from the beginning. Okay, what do we have later on? And this is um, Emily's equal sign. The energy we start with has to be equal to the sum that we have later. So EG plus EK 
okay? And how do we get to things like how fast is it going at the top of the loop? Well, then we say, this is e -E you just then substitute in the little formula part. What half kx squared was the E, E, L, M, G, H is the gravitational term, and then one half M, V squared is the kinetic term. This is where we stop, but this is a really ugly equation, but it really kind of falls together if we could do the visual part of it and then just bring and convert it over to the MGHs or the one half of V squared terms. That's as far as we can go right now because we don't have numbers to do anything with. And the reason I like to start here without numbers or anything is if we continue on and start throwing all those numbers in there, doing all the rearranging in algebra, people start going like this. I'm out. I don't know what you're talking about anymore. So right now, you might be there right now also, but we'll do another example, and then I'll let you guys kind of hash through some. Um, and uh, hopefully it starts to become fairly obvious. So what's the difference then between that one you guys just told me? I think Mallory or somebody said something about what's different. Frictions. Boom. All right. Awesome. So the so the this is still the same as before, but this time we got to include the track because the track is going to siphon off energy and cut and put it into heat. And if the track is in the system, if the wheels of the car get a little bit warmed up and the track gets a little bit warmed up and they're all like holding that energy, then we don't need another type of arrow that would say heat energy is leaving the system. So like the opposite of the Buffy thing, if we didn't put the track in there, then we would show heat being taken away and an arrow pointing out. Well, if you put the track in there, then we don't do that. So the beginning looks exactly like the other one did. So EG, EK, E elastic, and total. So it's all elastic. And that is equal to the total. So this is before again. And this is at the top of the loop. Okay, so we still have gravitational and we still have kinetic. We still, I think, should assume that the gravitational should be exactly the same as whatever you put it as on the above one. Same height, right? Gravitational is mass times gravity times height. Same car, so same mass. Same height and same G, same 10 for gravity. So MGH should be the same in both these examples. So whatever you used for EG before, if you two and a half or my three or um, Riley's two, it doesn't matter what you did before as long as you do the same here again. So I'm putting three. Uh, elastic is zero. Kinetic, but I got it now. I'm going to extend my graph because it's too small. And thermal is going to go in there to go next to the TME bars. All right. We got to put some in this bank account now, right? The thermal account. Let's make it easy. I want to put a quarter of a block in there or something silly. Let's just make it one block. And then how much does that leave for kinetic? One. It's got to add up to how many? Five. It's got to add up to five. So yeah, we can only put one in there. So three plus one is four. One more, one more is five. So add them all up. And, and now that is the law of conservation of energy. So all of those things equal the TME if you put a plus in between everything. In our equation, we got the E, E, L again to start. And what is it equal in the other side? 
What's in your bars except for the TME part? EG plus EK plus EQ. Okay. And we could finish it off by replacing with what the calculation kind of piece, you know, the other half of the EEL. What half KX squared? MGH. Not half. What's EK equation again? Oh, that's a great question. Um, what half M B squared? Beautiful. Thank you. And there isn't really one for E thermal. But if there was going to be one for E thermal, which it is, but we're not going to really do this. Friction's a force. F. The distance that is slid along the track is a distance. So we could say work is the friction force times the distance if we had to. We put an F times D in there and maybe say, like, what's the total distance this thing could slide if friction was two newtons and we had this beginning energy? Or go F times D and solve for D. As long as we had all these other pieces of information too. Right now, all I want you to get comfortable with is the setup. Save the algebra and that stuff for tomorrow. So, what I would like you to do, since I messed up and didn't give first hour the right copy, is to jump to um, the, the last page that has number three on it. So I'd like you to work and compare with each other. Yes, what did you do for this? So I don't know what to do, what should I do? So try three and four. And that's all I got on my agenda for today. So I'll stop the recording. Um, but that's basically homework. Um, and then tomorrow we'll look at those other two. And I will eventually post these up there on Canvas.